What's up, motherfuckers? Welcome back to another episode of the Low Life Motherfucking Chopper Podcast. What's up, you bozos? <laughs> it's, it gets to the point now where I look forward to what fucking corny thing you're going to say at the beginning. It's my favorite part of the week. It's the only part of the show that I actually prepare for. <laughs> I do my research. Uh, welcome to episode 260, 286. 286. We are joined by Matt and Austin. Uh, Matt from Burnt Up Wood Burning and his son Austin from Silver City Co. Uh, we're they're out of Meriden, Connecticut. We're gonna we're gonna jump into that interview, but first we got to go over some heavy housekeeping. Oh shit! We got we got mad shows. We got mad sponsors. We got mad shoutouts. First up, this is time sensitive information. Uh oh! Holy mother chopper show. It's tomorrow. This drops on Friday. It's Saturday, April 6th, 12 to 4, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Go check out the episode that we did a few weeks back. Five guys, one mic. Uh, all those dudes are super fucking cool. Uh, but that is happening manana. So if you're in the area, fucking get there. And if you're not in the area, you got one day to figure out how the fuck you're going to get to Colorado Springs by <laughs> noon. We got another show, brand new show. Oh, shit. Coming up quick, just announced. Oh. Yeezy Co. Hooster Bike Week. That is going to be July 13th at Ralph Steiner, 11 to 6. It's going in. It's If you've never been to this show, you got to make it out there. It's in the Worcester's most immaculate parking lot. It's dope. In front of Ralph Steiner. Oh, it's so nice, dude. It's like. Is this a chopper show? Is this the fucking Ritz? You gotta get in there and get those fucking hot dogs, dude. Yeah, you gotta get there early. Get there early and get them hot dogs. Hopefully, it'll be 112 degrees like it was last year with no shade. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Worcester Bike Week. And actually, this is, I think they it, they re rebranded it because last year it was the Easy Time Show. Yeah. So, uh, Worcester Bike Week. It's the only... Bike week that only lasts one day, but six hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much fun. It's, it's 10 pounds of lightning in a five it's the pound biggest, sack. It's the biggest bike week that only lasts one day. Not even the whole day. Just just six hours, seven <laughs> hours. Uh, next, surprise sponsor, Modelo's. Hey, oh, shit. thanks for coming on board you, again, Modelo. Do you habla espanol? Cole's, got a we got, we got a co-sponsor of Corona. Um, matter of fact, that leads us right into the La Espada Shopper Show. This is the third one. They're always fucking great. It's Saturday, May 4th, 2024, 576 Primrose Street, Haverhill, Mass. Custom bikes, bands, beer, food, vendors, raffles, indoor show, and a ride-in show starts at noon. The bands, raffles, and awards start at 4 p.m. If you need any additional information, hit up F16.9W on Instagram. If you don't have Instagram and you got fucking questions, sucks to suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, we got the fucking Low Life Lowdown. Our show. June 8th, 2024. It's going to be a banger. All raffle proceeds are donated to Operation Purpose. The homie Perry, we did an episode with him a few weeks back. Go check it out. Uh, anyways, it's a chopper show. 232 Califf Highway, Epping, New Hampshire. Food, beer, music, raffles, motorcycle, show, and biker games. Listen, if you want to get involved in the show, if you want to donate a raffle item, hit up Dan at No Luck Paintworks. If you don't have Instagram, go to lowlifechopperpodcast.com and email either one of these studs you see sitting on the screen. Okay? Um, if you want to vend, listen, this is year two for the show. Vending was hot last year. It's going to be even better this year. So if you want to vend, 
hit up Dan at No Luck Paintworks. Um, get your vendor spot. If you do not have Instagram, again, go to lowlifechopperpodcast.com. Um, and that's it. If you if you have a little shop and you make cool shit, even if you don't have a shop, then you tinker, you make little fucking figurines out of nuts and bolts, or you paint cool skateboards or fucking whatever. Um, if you want to throw into this raffle, greatly appreciated. Like I said, all proceeds go to Operation Purpose. Yeah, we actually, uh, our boy Sears, one of our laddies, he threw down, he got some helmet holders he just made, you know, he doesn't have a shop, he doesn't have a business. Appreciate that, homie, but uh, it's for a great cause, so the more raffles, I mean, we can't have enough raffles, so uh, if you have something cool, uh, even if you have something that maybe a set of bars or whatever that you mocked up on your bike that you're like, oh, I'm not going to use these if they're not all fucking nasty and crusty and shit, like, Throw them our way. Yeah. It's for a good cause. Yeah. We'll, uh, and listen, we'll let... this is a legitimate um, charity. All right? Operation Purpose is legit. Old homeboys helping out the veterans. You know that shit is close, near and dear to my fucking heart. Um, so even if you hate the veterans, do it for us. If you hate the veterans, you're a shitbag, but still do it for us. What's your fucking problem? Because <laughs> uh, you hate freedom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's all right. That's all I have for that show. I'm fucking just rambling right now. Yeah. So up next, food we trucks, got by the our... way. Food trucks. Food, oh, hold, yeah. one more thing on our show. We're having food trucks, okay? Um, we have one locked in right now for barbecue. The list is huge. I don't have the list, so I can't tell you what it is. Um, but as I remember, it was pulled pork, ribs, brisket, uh, smoked mac and cheese, chicken fingers, uh, coleslaw, all the fucking shit that you love at your barbecue spot will be at the show. Um, we're still looking, I think, as of right now, right? Yeah? For a burrito truck? Yes. So we're yes, still we looking were... for a burrito slash Mexican um, taco food taco truck. Um, if you know somebody, whether they're in Mass, Connecticut, if they are willing to come to New Hampshire, tell them to hit us up. It's free. We're not charging you. Just come sling some food and feed these fucking heathens. Yes. Yeah. Um, sponsors. The second S. Burnt up wood burning. You're going to hear from Matt today. He and his son, Austin, made, uh, they did a little collab on an LCP coat hanger? Super, helmet rack? Super sick. Coat rack. It's fucking awesome. Coat I rack. Gotta, it's not I a coat hanger. Pictures. A coat hanger is like a triangle with a hook on it. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, so uh, okay, it's a it's a hanger. It's coat I don't rack. Know what it's, called. it's a a coat rack. <laughs> yeah, but it could be a helmet rack too. Yeah, it could be a helmet rack. It would look real you nice with a coat rack it. right near your front door. Or you put your vest on there in a helmet. It has two hooks. They're made out of like yeah, chains. Put, fucking you awesome. You can put your vest, your helmet, and your gloves. No, there's two yeah. chains, right? Two or three. Two. Two. Okay. Yeah, it's dope. The thing's fucking beautiful. And uh, so so get in on that this month you can you can sign up for patreon at any time this month and still get in for that raffle i'm going to tell you we do it on the last week of the month so the last tuesday of the month is when we're going to be pulling it that's when we do the recording for the last uh for the last episode of the month and uh you can get in at any time so it's ten dollars a month go to our patreon it's on our website uh and sign up because this is this is a one of this is a one-off this is not mass produced. You will not be able to get this on fucking Amazon or Etsy. And I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Matt. He's not gonna make another one. I'm gonna be like, bro, if someone tries to commission you for this shit, tell him the fuck that off. Ain't happening. This is one of one, baby. All right. Next up, we got we got our boy, the Trey Bark Assassin Rodney over at Bump Shop Diaries Coffee Collab. Buy one of our beautiful camp mugs. And by the way, guys. Even though it's snowing this f fucking week in New Hampshire, I'm sure it's pretty nice elsewhere in America. It's camping season coming up. Grab you a camp mug. Then I'll send you a $5 off code. Scoot your cute little buns over to Bump Shop Diaries. Get $5 off that hardtail blend. Whole bean or ground. And don't forget to follow them. Bump Shop Diaries. Last up, the last S. Shoutouts. 
I did it last week. I'm doing it again this week. Joe Bacon. Joe Bacon is my spirit animal. This motherfucker this week. So he's he he was like, yo, dude, I can get all those old episodes. And he ain't just blowing smoke up my sweatpants, bro. Oh shit. He took he uploaded, he maxed out this FTP drive. I'm up to like, I think we're up to like 240 episodes. I got transferred. It's on my fucking hard drive. We own them. We got them. Thank you, Joe, a million times. Furthermore, I didn't even tell you this, Loctite. You want to listen to those episodes? Kind of. Go to lowlifechopperpodcast.com. <laughs> oh, son. I started uploading them. I started to <laughs> upload them. So we have our episodes up there, the videos that we've been doing for the past year. And there's some that got lost, right? So on, on uh, some of the ones that I've been doing after we got canceled were lost to, uh, to what the fuck's that? Spotify. But we have the uh, we have the videos there, and then I have a I built a page just for the archive stuff, the audio only. It's going to take me probably until I'm about fifty eight to get them all up there because there's so fucking many episodes. But slowly but surely, I'm uploading them there. And uh, go over to lowlifechopperpodcast.com, go to the archive, and you can start listening. I am doing it in order, so you can listen to the first. I think I got five up there. Right. I didn't know this big truth was number three. On what? Episode oh, yeah, yeah. three. Oh, yeah, yeah, He was away in the beginning. So I told you, I three. I downloaded an app on my phone that records the conversation. So I talked to him like this, and that's how that episode was. Yeah, Terrible. So episode, episode one, it was you talking to Greece and that other dude on their cell phones while they're driving home from work. Yeah. Episode number two was in a graveyard. Deadbeat recap. <laughs> and then... Episode three, you have the OG of the East Coast chopper scene, Big Truth. Hey. So we gotta we we gotta we gotta get him back on well actually, we're gonna be doing an episode with him very soon. Um but yeah, dude, it's it was cool to just to listen to all that old shit because I haven't heard that fucking shit in forever. But uh thanks again, Joe Bacon. Go check out lowlifechopperpodcast.com. Not only do we have the old archives there, but I also made a low life lowdown page. Yeah. And we're going to be uploading all the sponsors of the show and uh, information about the show as it becomes available. So you can always go there and check it out. Um, and that's it. Did you have any shout outs? Uh, I don't think so. I've been fucking pretty busy this week. Not really fucking with uh, Instagram too much. Um, yeah. But I just want to give a shout out real quick. Um. To the Big Truth Podcast. If you have not checked them out yet, go fucking subscribe. There's all kinds of shit on there. No matter what you're into, there's something on that podcast for you. Uh, the other one, check out the Crazy Gentleman Podcast. Rob is my fucking homie. One of my only homies that is as dedicated and loves hunting as much as I do. <laughs> Um, so me and me and Rob share a real close fucking bond. Go check out the Crazy Gentleman Podcast. And last but not least. We're covering the whole East Coast. Motherfucking Easy Co. on YouTube. My favorite Chopper YouTube channel. These dudes are fucking hilarious. Everyday fucking Chopper dudes. And uh, go support them. Support my friends. <laughs> I got another shout out. You guys may have seen that I had a bit of a We'll call it a snafu on April 1st. Oh. Which also coincidentally happens to be April Fool's Day. Now, everybody was hitting me up. Yeah. The, the, dude, people were concerned. Yeah. It had. When did you get an x ray of a jockey shifter in a guy's ass? <laughs> oh, I actually, I actually did that. I, stuck <laughs> I did that for on, the I, channel. <laughs> yeah. It was actually Nana's sink knob and, uh, I went down there and I said, I have something stuck in my head. I did it just for that story. But uh, I wanted to shout out everybody that was actually concerned for my well-being. I got a ton of messages. I was just fucking around. But uh, I guess as a consequence of that and my weird sense of humor, uh, I found out that a lot of people actually care about me. Yeah. Dude, when I was reading it, first I read like the first line and I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, wait, this is a low life page. What the fuck? 
And then I keep reading and it says Loctite at the end. I'm like, this motherfucker, dude. Yeah, dude. I had a lot of people like messaging me like, like. But I had people they were, calling they were, my cell phone. They were pissed. <laughs> they were like pissed that I got them. But then they were also like super relieved. They were like, oh my God, my heart sank. And I was like, I better throw up another story that just says that it was a joke. Because some people, they don't, they don't get jokes, you know? Here's what I think is, I, mean, I think what happened is, paragraph. I think they read like the first half of it. and was like, oh my God, yeah. and immediately went on the fucking rampage. Because if you yeah. read the end yeah. where you're like, he's in life-threatening fucking critical condition with a jockey shift stuck in his anus. That's kind of a red yeah. flag. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I I had a bunch of story like subsequent stories uh, that <laughs> that Instagram wouldn't let me post. Really, that went into detail. Yeah, that went into detail. I was like, you know, the doctor like, said nah, this it shit took ain't considerable <laughs> considerable force to get that up into this anal cavity. That <laughs> they part. weren't having it. Yeah, they were just like, we're not even gonna let you post it because you've said anus like seven times. So. Anyways, thank you everybody for caring about me and my well being, and I really appreciate it. And hopefully, you guys found it funny. I fucking did. I was laughing all goddamn day. But what I didn't know, someone hit me up and they said, "You can't have an April Fool's joke after noon." I never heard. Have of you that. ever heard that? Nah. It's on the wiki page. Anybody who, I guess, has a has a April Fool's joke after noon. Those is, late night pranks finds them. You'd be in a shit bag. You yourself become the fool. Yikes. In spite of yourself. So I guess I'm a fool. I'm an April's fool. But all right, that was final. That was the final shout out to everybody. Um, let's get into this motherfucking interview if our guests are still there. Matt and Austin, you guys there? Yeah. Yo, okay. Okay. Where are you? All right. <clears throat> all right. We are joined with Matt from Burnt Up Wood Burning and Austin, his son from SilverCity.co. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. So, uh, Matt, you you've been on um, as a sponsor for a little while now. How long have you been listening to the show? Oh God, I I think I started listening to you guys. Gotta be probably five six months ago. Um, just you know going oh, going through podcasts and stuff, and just I'll re-listen to different podcasts of yours because. I can't find any other real good chopper ones or bike ones. I mean, there's a few good ones, but um, I don't know. You guys being from up this way in New England, it's like, well, you know. So, um, but yeah, two months. So you were you were actually you were actually actively looking for chopper podcasts. Um, yeah, because Austin is you know on his third build. Um, so third build, first Harley, um, that he built. So, um, you know, always looking for little stuff that, you know. Just things I can give to him and, you know, hey, try this, try that. But, yeah, I, I love listening to your podcast. It's I just, you know, sit at my desk at work, throw my earbud in, and I'm like, all right, I'm good to go. I'm Hell usually yeah. laughing my ass off and somebody comes in and goes, oh, what's what's funny? <laughs> so who do you like more, Rhino or Loctite? Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Don't worry, <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Oh, so how did you find us? Just browsing like through Spotify or something like that? I did. I was I was on I was on uh, Spotify just cruising through. I you know, I've listened to Truth Podcast quite a bit. And then nice. I think I saw you guys on there, um, like through that or something, heard you guys mention that I'm like, Oh, what is this one? So I looked and I'm like, Oh, perfect. So nice. Yeah. So then I'm like, uh, you know, I told my wife, I said, you know what, I'm gonna Throw these guys a sponsor and, you know, do something for, you know, for them, you know. Yeah. And support. I don't, I don't know if we, we mentioned it, but you're in Meriden, Connecticut. We're, uh, I have a buddy from Meriden. I don't know Connecticut too, really? too well, but that's outside of Hartford. Meriden is basically smack oh, dab in the middle of Connecticut. It's, it, they say it's the most central part of Connecticut. Um, we're literally oh. 20 minutes from New Haven. 20 minutes from Hartford. Oh, okay. um, yeah. We're right in the middle. Um, you know, like when we ride to, um, we'll ride to, you know, Laconia or something. It'll take us two and a half hours or so. You know, depends how we want to ride. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you guys, uh, did you grow up in Connecticut? I did. 
I grew up between uh, I grew up between Meriden and then Wallingford, which is the next town uh, below Meriden. Um, grew up. I grew up born. Uh, grew up in a cemetery, basically. My uh, my stepdad was a caretaker for a cemetery, and then I took mm-hmm. over from there. Started at the bottom, worked my way up, and then took over a different cemetery. And twenty years mm-hmm. later, I. Uh, couldn't do that anymore. Couldn't really work outside, you know, neck surgery, shoulder stuff, you know, mm. back. And it's just like, yeah. So I went to a factory. So, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. So, so you, you guys, how far are you from Stra- uh, Stratford Springs? No, the swap beat. Well, Stratford oh. Springs, about 45 minutes. That's coming up soon, isn't it? It's yes. this month, is it? Uh, you... Ju- July? No. April. That's right. April. Yeah. Yeah. End of April. Yeah. Cause it's the same weekend you're going. Oh, end of April. Yeah. I'm going to try to get to that one this year if I can. Yeah. I heard it's the bomb. I'm going to try to go. Boston will be down in South Carolina. North, He's, North Carolina. North Carolina. He's hitting the mini truck nationals down oh. there. So oh, hell yeah. Sick. Yeah. Besides bikes, he's got a slammed, uh, slam Silverado. So it's he's got some got some cool toys. Nice. Yeah. So so Austin, you're uh I guess did you start start out in cars and move into motorcycles or so, you're just a gearhead, you do whatever? What so uh when I was younger I started off with on a bicycle. I used to race BMX and then uh so I started that when I was like three. And I did that up till I was eighteen. And then, well, a little bit before I turned 18, I got, dad got me to, like, somehow, in, like, a trade or something. So I tore it all apart. I had no idea what I was doing. So I'm like, oh, I'll just tear it apart. So then that happened. And, uh, yeah, it just snowballed. It just snowballed. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh yeah, I'm kind of jealous because that's the childhood I would have wanted to have a dad. Because I, I, I was l- looking at your stories and stuff, and uh, I see you guys still work together in the garage, wrenching on shit. And I'm yeah. like, damn, dude, that's like the dream is to have a child that's into the same <laughs> fucking shit. Are you an only child or is there no, another? No, kids? so I have an older brother and an older sister, so I'm the baby. Yeah. Okay. Are they Austin. into Are they into bikes and trucks Actually, and all that shit? So. Too? Actually, the whole family, I started off racing BMX when I was younger. Uh, my oldest son is 35. My daughter is in the middle. Uh, she's 32, and Austin is 25 in June. Um, all the kids race BMX. Um, you know, it did super well in Connecticut. We did nationals, regionals, all that stuff. Um, a lot of fun. Um, you know, some quite a few hospital visits. Um, I bet. But it was, you know, something else. The and actually, all my kids ride. My oldest son, uh, he used to have a nightster. Uh, we used to do a lot of ride. Um, and now he's, you know, he's he's got a his job. And he's he rides still big into bicycles. Uh, but got rid of his bike. But he'll still, you know, if he comes over, he still sits on the bikes. You know. You know, so we'll be riding. He'll, I'm sure he'll ride with us this summer. And my daughter, we were just at, actually in New Hampshire about two months ago. Um, and uh, my daughter bought a, a 94 Sportster. So she's going to start riding. Oh, no, she is. So it's for wild. Um, you know, I think it's great. You know, him and I will get out of work and we'll go out on the bikes, and, you know, we'll ride down to the down to the shore, you know, grab a coffee, grab a bite to eat. Come back home, do you know, fifty, eighty miles, and call it a night. You know, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. That's awesome. So how, man? How, I guess how did you get into bikes and cars and all that shit? Where you? Uh, I've always been kind of like a gearhead. I mean, I went to mechanic school. You know, I I hated high school. Um, you know, got out of high school, went to uh, went to mechanic school, uh, worked for a dealership, and things like that. And, uh, and then, you know, kind of got into cars. My, uh, my biological father always rode, always had a Harley. He had a 74 
shovel head. Um, and it's still around in town. And that's kind of like my dream. I'd like yeah. to find that bike. Mm -hmm. What should be kind of cool. My dad, I mean, he's still alive. He lives in Florida. Um, uh, and now he rides a trike at 76. Uh, so he's got a bottle of oxygen and a trike. Holy so, shit. You know, does he so, put the, does he put the oxygen on the trike? He does. Oh, look, yeah. Fucking he does. Hey, dude. He's got the thing on his Goals. nose. Uh, Oh, he's got COPD and stuff. So uh, he's got a little trailer. He calls his uh, little lark on behind his trike, Jeez. which is a fucking trick. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you know, ass. he always, you know, him and him and my mom were divorced when I was a kid, and uh, you know, he always had the bike, and you know, I always loved that. You know, you know, I loved the bike, loved the bikes. Um, you know, loved my. Then I got into you know bicycles. I got older. Um, had a Kawasaki, like a 74 Kawasaki that somebody gave me and the thing was all chopped to hell. I mean, huge, you know, raked out front end, um, didn't run, but you know, I sat on it, you know, tinkered with it. And I think I got it running a little bit, uh, and it got rid of it. And then, you know, I ended up getting a little older, got married. Um, I ended up getting a, I had a 56 Harley Sprint one longer. Uh, which was those things are cool a looking. very cool little bike. Um, Kick myself in the ass from there, of course. No, yep. um, but you know, got that, and then you know, the kids were younger. Uh, I started out, you know, really. I'd got uh, my wife and I got a uh, Suzuki Boulevard. Uh, rode the hell out of that thing. I think we put forty thousand miles on in a couple of years, um, and then you know. I got to say, my wife is the best. I mean, went to my oldest son, called me up when he had his bike and, oh, you and mom are out, out for a ride. Stop the Harley dealer, pick me up parts. All right. So I picked up his parts. My wife sees this very nice heritage sitting in a parking lot. She says, that's a beautiful bike. I'm like, yeah. So she goes, let's take it for a ride. Took it for a ride and ended up trading the boulevard in and I've still got the heritage. Riding it like hell. Hell yeah. So. I love it. You know, it's, you know, I, I really dig in the, the chopper Austin's building. Um, I wrote it a little bit, but I'm like, man, it's a little rough, but yeah, it's all right. What, what Austin, what it, what is this chopper that you're building right now? I understand you're building so, it for a show or you're, you're hoping to get it to, is it the easy, uh, the Worcester bike week show? Yeah. Yeah. So a couple months ago, they put on their story that building a Evo Sportster over the winter to the mesh them. So I didn't see it, but my buddy, he messaged me on Instagram. He said, hey, contact them. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I did, and they're like, we're doing a Sportster invited series. You want it? I'm like, sure, I guess so. So I'm like, cool. No shit. So what? What? Uh, what is it? What's What's the bike? So it's a '94 Sportster 883, and uh, the previous owner he put a 12th big fork in it. So it's a, uh, it's sketchy, but it's fun. No shit. Yeah. When I when I first got it, I wanted to. Uh, I was 21 when I first got it, so I wanted to learn how to do wheelies and burnouts. But then uh, I came to realization, I'm like, yeah, no. I, I definitely can't. <laughs> so I'm like, guess I'll chop it now. No shit. So you, you still got a little time because that's in uh, July. How far along are you on that build? So I just finished welding everything. So now I want to uh, mold the frame and paint it. Molding. Well on your way. Well, it's, it's The fun has just begun. Yeah, dude fucking the thought even a thought even when someone says molding a frame i sh i get like goosebumps <laughs> yeah. i'm like oh so much work so much work such a mess and so when i what it is right now it's kind of like the like the second rendition of it being a hardtail because i te so technically i finished it already but then uh I'm gonna snap in it. september i took it for the honorary test ride and uh, my back brake locked up, and I uh, 
slid across the road. Wow. That, that was interesting. No shit. Yeah, how, that's uh, how, not the joyous thing you want to see when you're fouling your kid. Oh, you were behind him. Fuck, <laughs> hey. Right throughout his, I mean, right there. What? When we ride together, we're right. We're yeah, right. right. How, and, how did it lock up? How did what happened? So, hardtail. I have a, a TC Bros hardtail cap, and uh, you have to have the linkage uh, bolts in the caliper mount. And uh, I forgot a very crucial step to put lock sight on it, so <laughs> it must have backed out a little bit, and I downshifted. And that must have just been enough for it to pop out, and I hit the brake, and it just like wrapped itself in the in the wheel. That's wow. the only thing I can think of that happened. No shit. How fast were you going? Uh, I don't know, probably like 15, 20 miles an hour. So I wasn't going crazy fast. We were just slowing down for a stop sign. It was only about two miles from the house. And I'm behind him and I see, you know, I see the stop sign coming up. He downshifts. And, you know, he downshifts and you hear that little chirp of the ass end. And I see it kind of go over a little bit. I'm like, okay, he's he's fucking around. So, and then I just see the bike go down. Ah, oh, son of a bitch! I lock up my bike. I almost hit him. I'm like, son of a fuck. But he he popped up. He looks at me. He goes, all these falls I took racing. I'm good. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting on the side. He picks the chopper up. He goes, uh, let me take your bike. He hops on my bike, runs back home. My wife calls me. Goes, I uh, hear your bike. But you're not on it. So, and uh, so I think I was more kind of just, you know, seeing your kid go down on a bike was just like, oh, yeah. So I was real worked up. And uh, he's like, don't worry about it. I'm fine. You know, he, he really didn't, he didn't get banged mm -hmm. up or nothing. You know, he got a couple little scratches, yeah. but he was more pissed about the bike. Um, and, and, you know, people can say what they want, but you know, the biker community is just, you know, such a, a such a a great community um i'm sitting on the side of the road some dude stopped by and he's like what's up you're right i'm like yeah he goes yeah i ride too i'm just coming home from work he sat there with me till he came back with his truck and uh, helped us load the bike on all that shit so it was you know it's pretty cool yeah. you know it's you yep. know the whole you know everyone in the biker community you know it's yeah you know, you see somebody you know, having an issue and, uh, you know, we'll stop too. If somebody's having an issue, you know, usually everyone's like, yeah, we're good. We're just pushing it for gas. So, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go get you some gas. I'll push it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, the, uh, luckily, the, the biker community, I, I was actually, I took the bike out today cause it was like a balmy 40 fucking three degrees out. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. I went, you know, you stop for gas and shit and you can tell who rides cause they're like, safe, ride safe, brother, you know? And, nope. uh, I'm behind this Jeep and I, the, you know, those, the Jeeps have like the, the wheel cover or whatever. And it's like, you wouldn't get it. It's a Jeep thing. And it has like a guy oh, yeah. or something. I'm like, that is like the <laughs> shittiest subculture you could possibly, <laughs> what a lame subculture that is. like we, yeah. everybody does get it. You drive a Jeep and you wave at other Jeep guys, you yeah, know, like the biker community that there's like some substance there, you know, that we actually care yeah, about yeah. one another. We stop for each right. other. Oh, the Jeep thing, the hand on the steering wheel though. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was like, Congrats, you got a shitty car. It's funny, would, when, dude. Those my Jeep wife, guys fucking piss me my off. My wife got a Jeep uh, last year, and for like the first six months when we're driving around, everybody would do like that wave thing, and every time they would wave, I'd flip them off. <laughs> Wait, so it's not now just nobody a Jeep waves Wrangler? to me no more. I thought it was like a, I thought it was like a Wrangler thing. Is like all, no had... any like off road yeah. Jeep? Any Jeep? Yeah. Uh, dude, yeah, it's weird. Fuck Jeep it's, guys. It's weird. That. I had a I had a guy at work tell me one time, oh, you know, I don't ride, uh, but I got a Jeep. I'll just take the cover off. I'll just take the top off. It's the same thing. I'm like, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Fucking no. Jeep people, dude, right? Yeah, they don't fucking know. I'm like, not even in close. Dude, that's yeah. a ridiculous thing to say. Coming yeah. from a Jeep a Jeep person, though, it doesn't yeah. surprise me. Well, you know, I think it's because his wife won't let him get a bike, so. Yeah, it's too dangerous. You know. Just as cool looking in a Jeep. So, uh, yeah. how'd you get started in? I guess let's let's get into what is burnt up wood burning. How'd you get started in wood burning, and uh, what what kind of work do you do? 
So wood burning is my side gig. I uh, I grew up. I always loved art. Loved drawing, doodling, you know, making little things, um, printing. You know, I always had a thing for you know trying to make. When I was a kid, or my mother told me I always try to like paint signs and stuff. And, uh, there was an old school sign painter not too far from my house, and um, used to go up there with my stepdad and you know just watch this guy. It was like mesmerized. He was just an old school guy. You do pickup trucks, you know, work trucks, everything. It was just in my head. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Uh, so as I got older, you know, I got a little more into art. Um, always drawing stuff. Um, then, you know, got gotcha. into tattooing a bit um, for a few years. Uh, did that. And then uh, we got rid of our shop. And my wife's like, you need to do something. She goes, you know, you got to get back into some art. So. I uh, picked up a burner, you know, one of those ones at Walmart, and uh, started. Somebody said, hey, you should put your stuff on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, right. Social media sucks. Um, and <clears throat> I did um, put a couple pieces on it, and people are like, we want to buy it. I'm like, what? Um, went, started getting a little better machines. I uh, got a couple real good burners, and kind of like a regular unit, like tattooing. Uh, without the buzz um so you know started with that just started doing more pieces and then people were just asking me you know can you make me this can you make me that i'm like yeah if i can come up with a stencil and a design yeah so uh over the years i've done i've got pieces in every state in the united states except for i'm down to nine states um other than that all those other states are covered I've done work for uh, Babes Ride Out California. I did uh, a few years ago. I did one of their award plaques uh, in Cahoots Motor Co. They're another uh, woman's uh, camping retreat. Uh, I was their sponsor for like four or five years. Well, I've done a bunch of bunch of YouTubers. You know, done stuff for did a piece for Shade Tree, a Blockhead, um, you know, Weems. Weems Motor Co. I've done quite a bit of stuff for him, uh, whether it be signs. Uh, did, just did a the most recent piece I did for him was a a shop stool with his new logo on it. Uh, it came out pretty wild, and you know it's I'm I've got pieces out of the country, um, and I was just I was just in awe that people found wood burning to be like, you know, it, it's just it's a different art. Um, I enjoy it. I'll, I'll come home and it's, I'll just sit in my room here and just, you know, come up with a design, find different designs, draw different designs, you know, try to do the best I can and, you know, uh, try to get that picture as close to possible what the people want. Yeah. Of course I, I love doing, love doing bikes, um, you know, pets, I've done a million pets. Uh, but bikes are probably one of my favorites uh, bikes and lettering uh, which is always always fun so that's why when i did the play gotcha. so <clears throat> a, a shop stool too i i, I guess yeah i didn't even consider yeah. that you can burn anything that's wood right so yeah. um that would be yeah a he's got i think he's got stool. it on i think jared's got it on his uh on his page if not i'll send you a picture <laughs> of it um but yeah, it's it's wild. And usually yeah. if I need hooks or something, like something off the wall, I'll be like, oh, Austin, I need you to do this. So like when I was, you know, doing your plaque, I'm like, dude, we got to come up with some some good hooks. I don't just want like normal, you know, normal hooks, you know? So, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah it's wild. Dude, that came out so fucking cool. Um, it's so crazy. It doesn't chain even hooks. look like wood burning. Yeah. So what is, what is that process? I guess like, what do you, is there a, is there a wood burning this, tool this or is, is it uh, a soldering iron or I got them right here. This is like the, this is like the one you buy at like Walmart. A plug. You know, a lot of kids will start mm -hmm. off with this. And so then I've graduated to, these are different pens that I use. Uh, kind of like tattooing different points, different edges. Some are for shading, some are for 
lettering. Uh, this is the actual unit I use. So this is my power supply of my pens around here. So I just take it, I just, with a pen, uh, I do my shading, my outlining, um, everything. You know, um, a lot of people want different things colored. I'm like, yeah, you know, if somebody's got a real big design they want, um, the biggest I've done to date, I think is about four foot by four foot. Uh, that took a while. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, so big where I had to actually no, put doesn't. it on the ground and uh, I'm doing it on the ground. So, but it was, you know, it's still cool. It's, uh, that was like, I don't know, I went to like downtown Denver, mm -hmm. Colorado. So, um, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, for that far away, I'm like, you know, shipping is going to be crazy. Um, but the lady didn't care. She's like, you know, a bunch of people yeah. out here bought your stuff. I just, yeah, I like your style. So I'm like, sweet. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'll burn out wood, uh, leather. Um, you know, the veg tan leather is cool to burn. That. Oh, so that's this, that's the same process yeah. as tanning. Or yep. Leather same and wood. tools, same tools, um, same, same you know, principles. Burn it. Um, you know, the leather, huh. um, I'll, I'll, uh, sometimes color that a little bit with some different stuff, but I don't know. Usually as a rule, I mean, if it's something like I did this piece here, um, this Harley black, um, this was like an old school, you know, Harley tattoo design. Um, so I drew it up, put it out, stencil it on the wood. And I'm like, ah, this will look better colored. Um, so I did color it. And um, <clears throat> since I have this up, this is only like probably eight inches. Um, but I'd be willing to do whoops, one of these, but larger um, and donate it to the show for a raffle. So, yeah, and uh, you guys were saying about bars. Yeah. I have a of uh, rabbit ears that I had on my bike, and I'll donate those too. Fucking hey, a! Look at us. Yeah, yeah. Got, got to, got helping to. out our veterans, helping out uh, Perry. Love it. Yeah, do that. So, it this is something. I mean, it's yes. it's putting on smoke because yeah. you're burning oh, wood, so that must smell amazing. No, I do. Is it, do you need I to do, do it right, outside, like or my, it, it's not? This is our like little art room. Um, so I do it right in here, right next to the window. You no, know, it depends. Yeah. I can crank the heat up, and this burn pen, the end will get red. Uh, you know, if I really want to burn something, like mm -hmm. make real deep, dark lines, I'll crank the heat up and that thing will be red hot. And usually when I turn it up that hot, I usually end up hitting my finger with it. Um, so, you know, fingers are all calloused and shit. So, <laughs> of course, but it's just, you know, um, so like when you guys get this plaque, you'll notice I did a, how I usually I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll color in, uh, Usually, like when you tattoo a nice tight circle uh, to do uh, color, but I used a different um, effect on yours, a different style. I did stippling, so it's just basically dotting. Uh, so I crank the heat up real hot, and I just dot each one. So you'll notice when you get it, uh, if you look at your design, it's all little dots. So it it takes a little longer, but it, it comes out really crisp. So it's it's pretty cool, you know. Wood burning, pyography, um, you know, writing with fire. I, I kind of like the writing with fire a bit better. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we were trying to, uh, I was trying to figure out what to call it, like, during the intro, because I was like, it is, is a, a pla plaque. Yep. It's called a plaque, yeah, right? I mean, I, wooden, wood yeah, plaque. Yeah, a yeah, wooden uh, plaque, right? Okay. It's probably what, uh, 27 inches by probably 11 um, with the two hooks. So hooks, like I said, you know, it could be yep. helmet, uh, helmet, jacket, vest, anything. Sure. You can even hang sausage on. Oh. Fuck, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Give it to the wife. Some right? hot dog links. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Some some hot dogs. Um. Did did I did I I looked at the pictures. Uh, is that brazing you did on the hooks? No. So all of that is all. TIG welded. Oh, it's all TIG welded. Yeah. Oh, shit. So, yes, it was fun. 
the first one I made, I used a hole saw to cut them out or to cut the first one out. And the second one, it was just, it was a pain in the ass trying to cut it out with the hole saw. So have shit. What do you got? What yeah. do you got for a TIG machine? What are you running? So I have a, uh, an Amazon one. It's a uh, HP 201. Okay, yep. So it's, it makes two. It's good enough. It has a 220 mm-hmm. and it's stick welding too. So yep. pretty good enough for the garage. Yeah. How'd you get into, uh, yeah. how'd you get into welding? I guess, I guess you just. So, so Boston, really, Boston by trade is a welder and fabric. Oh, no shit. So yeah, by trade, I'm, <laughs> I'm a welder and fabricator. Nice. But it all started when my brother, he got his first motorcycle. It was a 81 GS 550 and he was bobbing it out. And my uncle came over and taught my brother how to weld. And then I was like really interested in that. So then my uncle, that same welder that I showed my brother with, a couple years later, he gave it to me. So I learned on that. And then my parents, when I was in high school, they bought me a little Craftsman MIG welder that I could put gas to. Well, I did that. And then my junior year of high school, my BOAG teacher, there was a TIG welder in the classroom. And I was just like, just let me do it. I just want to try it. So for like a month straight, I just looked at YouTube how to take mm-hmm. well. And I learned that. And then senior year, I was basically just in the little welding area all the time because I just wanted to get as good as I could at it. Then I went to trade school. And that was that was probably the best I've ever had. I met a lot of, a lot of cool people. Uh, my teacher, she was amazing. And uh, I got a job. Out of there doing uh, structural welding. Oh shit! And it was it's like light iron work, but we were we were outside all the time, so that that was fun. But now I work at uh, I work at the this place called Pratt and Whitney in Connecticut, and I just fix airplane parts. Oh shit! So you're doing a, lo- a lot of aluminum welding and stuff like that. So and I'm not welding at all. I just kind of just wanted to want to do welding on like the side now, but I like it too much. That's kind of one of the reasons why I left my old work because I just, I wasn't starting to like it anymore. So I'm like, I just need to stop doing that as my main job. That's that's actually a great life tip, dude. Like, cause a lot of people are like, you know, oh, I want to, I love this thing. I want to make it my job. And then, well, jobs suck. I mean, it kind of like ruins it. Yeah. 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 No shit. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. So when Austin was he, he's Austin's a, a bit of a, a humble guy, um, but you know, as the proud dad, um, I will say when he was in trade school, welding school, um, oh, he graduated wow. top of his class um, as a welder, wow. and you know, his teacher had told him one time, "Why don't you come back, you know, a few years and try to be an instructor?" And he's like, "No, nah, I don't want to teach me." <laughs> oh shit! And uh, when I was in welding school, also we uh, what was that thing called? King of the Baggers. King of the Baggers. There was this thing with Harley called King of the Baggers, and the town that my that my welding school was in was in the same town as a Harley dealer. So the trade school teamed up with the Harley dealer, and we helped them build a bike. So that that was that's fucking awesome. Yeah, we built a. Uh, brand new road glide and it's just into a performance bagger and uh we took the bags off and it's like you would think it would look weird but it looked sick with no bag oh, yeah yeah it was a pretty sick bike and he painted all red white and blue yeah. thing was just an absolute just what a showpiece and i think they ended up selling the dealership ended up selling for like fifty five thousand dollars yeah, somebody Praise. came in there. I guess a, a business guy came in there and goes, "Yep, I want it." Like, well, I guess if you have that much money, yeah. sure. That's fucking awesome. But, and I guess he doesn't even. I guess he doesn't even ride it. What just got to put away. Like those fucking rich yeah, people. Pretty yeah. sure. Pretty sure that a almost fully built motor too. Oh, Jesus. So I'm like, damn. I'm like, I'm glad I didn't get out <laughs> being balls off. Damn, right? dude. Dude, it's interesting though, because like, uh, man, how times change, like. 
I I grew up in an era with where they still had shop class. And I remember having like a, a welding yeah. class and we had plasma cutters yeah. and stick welders and shit. But I would, at the time when I, at that age, I must've been like 16, 17 years old. I didn't, I wasn't like attracted to it. I sucked at it. I could not get to, a, a, I could not stick weld for the, I couldn't not stick the electrode to the fucking thing and just have it cook. And my, my teacher was basically just like, dude, you're fucking retarded. I don't know. I can't teach you. Uh, and he got, he, he just like, give me a passing grade. Just give me the fuck out of his class. But I wish I was like, I wish I had that drive, you know, like when I was that age, I just, I wasn't interested in that shit at that time, but I could have learned so much having like all that equipment and all that, all the resources and all in the teachers and shit. And now I'm kicking myself because now I TIG weld and I absolutely suck at it. And it's just all learned That's, on YouTube. And he's a lie. He doesn't suck. People to actually know what the <laughs> fuck. Dude, compared to like people that are really good. That's the thing is you go, you have to go and humble yourself every once in a while. Go watch someone that like actually is awesome at TIG welding. And then you're just like, oh my God, I fucking suck. But yeah, they need. And he's like. He he's like a perfectionist. He's you know it's I've had a bunch of older guys like where he used to work. Old time welders are like this kid's going places. He's he's a perfectionist. I'm like, yeah, I know. I mean, I had him weld something on my old pickup, just like my hitch. I'm like, just just hit it. Just need a weld here. It probably, it probably took me like an hour because I was I wanted. To be he's perfect. like, no. Nope. So he ground it all off. I'm like, it's yeah. fine. He's like, nope, gotta do it. So he just spent an hour on it. Just you need the you need the perfect. patience. I'm like, tig, so I always say I'm a yeah. I'm I'm a TIG welder with MIG welder patience, and that's why I'm not as great <laughs> as I could be because with MIG welding it's just like zip. It doesn't matter if it's rusty or painting, just burn through that shit. But uh, TIG welding takes a lot of fucking prep and a lot of fitment, and uh, but it is. It is fun to do. Like when I'm welding stuff, I'm like, I can't believe I'm melting fucking these two things together and making something out of it. You know, it's peaceful yeah. too. TIG welding no makes you a better anything. welder. Though. It is. Oh yeah, yeah. But sometimes when you're just trying to get shit done, it would be nice to just be like, <laughs> throw the MIG on there and just like zip. Yeah, just look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the other yeah. thing I was going to ask you because you guys mentioned BMX racing, and I have. I do not know what that is. Like, is that like I know B like when I was growing up, kids had BMX bikes. They'd they'd be it would be more oh, like yeah. skateboarding and shit. They'd jump over shit and whatever. What what is BMX racing? Is it on a track? Is it on like? Oh. It's it basically bicycle motocross yeah. and dirt bike with okay. no motor. You're going over jumps, um, you know, triples, doubles, uh, high berms. And usually the thing that sucks is on most tracks, uh, especially around here, uh, the turns are all asphalt. asphalt. So if you if you fall in there, you're it sucks. Not Damn. Yeah. So um, I cased a few jumps and went head first and shoulder first and took separated the shoulders and broke some collarbones and I'm like, yeah, okay. Oh, <clears throat> But yeah, it's it it was it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, we we would travel all over. We, you know, uh, for years uh, when Austin was real little, uh, we would spend Christmas time in a, in a Columbus, Ohio, because they would have a race they called the President's Cup. We'd go down there, and that was like a huge national. It was thousands of riders down there, and it was it was what an experience. Uh, it was pretty wild. Um, so it's. You know, you're seeing some of these guys. Like, I still have a, a good friend who races, and he's uh, my age, 56, and he's uh, national number two. Uh, Shout out Tommy Johnson. Yeah. Um, he is, this dude is, he's in Florida. And this dude's wow. killing it, man. Um, I mean, regiment, diet, yeah. everything. I'm like, damn, yeah, dude, we're the same age, and I'm like, all fat shit, you know? <laughs> We're gonna leave that bicycle ride into the professionals, you know. Yeah, I like That's beer right. and hot dogs yep. too much. I like to watch it. No, yeah, it was I, funny uh, though because I was yes. I was actually just uh, when I was growing up, I grew up out in the sticks, and we didn't we couldn't have BMX bikes because we needed the extra gears because it was all hills and shit. You know what I mean? 
So like all my friends, they lived in the city. They had these cool BMXs and I'd fucking like flip the handlebars doing tricks and shit. But I had like a fucking Huffy mountain bike, 10 speed or whatever. And uh, we used to we used to just build like jumps and shit, you know, like we take logs and put like de- my dad's like fucking plywood he probably had for some project. And he did. <laughs> he would just like make these fucking ridiculous jumps. And uh, oh, yeah, never. Dude, I didn't even know what a helmet was, dude. I, you, dude, a bicycle helmet. That's a new thing. That's like that <laughs> didn't happen <laughs> back in the day. Show up with a helmet on. That's ridiculous. But uh. I was just, I was watching this video, I think it was like last week and I was over at my mom's house and they had like, they broke out the home videos. Oh, yeah. My older no brother, help. he was like in seventh grade, we're going off these like just stupid jumps right? with logs and shit. And uh, he goes over the handlebars on his Huffy and breaks his collarbone. We got it all on film. We had, uh, my dad had oh, yeah. like a fucking, it wasn't like the VHS, but it was like the little cartridge thing, you know? Uh and we used to just like film shit and we just watched it on repeat, just going over this jump and just like crunch. You hear the bone break. He just, dude, it was God. the last day of school. <laughs> it was a lot. La- it was the last day of school right before summer. Oh, <laughs> dude, to break your collarbone. Yeah. Yeah. But he's an asshole. So he deserved it. Yeah. And we just watched it on repeat. <laughs> crunch, crunch. You know, the worst thing was is, you know, wife brings me to the emergency room. And, you know, I had longer hair. I wasn't quite, didn't have the white. And I walked in and, and there's like four nurses oh, yeah. hanging around. And they like keep peeking in the room, peeking in the room. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? My wife went out there. She goes, oh, they thought you're Matthew McConaughey. I'm like, what? I'm like, are you fucking serious? But they come in and they're like, okay, four of them walk in. I'm like, why are there four of you here? Because what we're going to do, you're not going to like. They had to like pull the collarbones broken, so they had to like reset some shit. I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> the most pain. <laughs> Yo, so speaking of him doing sports, so on my on my personal Instagram, I have a picture of this dude. When was that? In, like the seventies, when he played high school basketball. He was in short shorts. It was amazing, and he's like going to shoot the ball. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> now your you guys, your kids are young, right? Younger. Yeah, wait till they get this age. You know, they, they start like finding old pictures and shit of you going, hey, look, you're a fucking dork. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's gonna be weird, like, cause like when I was growing up and shit, my dad actually went he was like a photographer. He went to school for photography, oh, wow. so so there's a lot of pictures of me when I was younger. Um, but my kids, every single day of their life is documented in a picture. You know. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, actually, I don't take a lot of pictures of myself. And in fact, it was weird. I was I try to put someone's picture in my phone as the contact, you know, so I know who's calling. I don't have one single picture of my mother. I've never photographed her. Damn. Wow. I felt terrible. Yeah. <laughs> So her, Actually, her picture is a picture of my dog wearing a wig or something. <laughs> I was like, sorry, mom. I don't, I guess I got to take a picture of my mom sometime. But um, yeah, definitely a different uh, back then, you know, like growing up, like there was no picture. You, you could go years and probably someone never took a picture of you. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So those pictures yeah, are man. like precious. You know, you get your dad mid jump shot or whatever. And it's like, yeah. you hold on to that. Oh, yeah. He, he's sure to bring it up all well, the time, yeah. too. He's I'm like, proud of that. Hey, look at that. What'd you weigh, Dad? Like, 100 pounds? Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. But, you know, kids can be little wise asses. And with, like, uh, going back to racing, so my, all, all of us raced. My, uh, my brother and my sister. My sister, she was a, she was a badass when she raced. This, this girl, no gloves. Never. She would just wreck in the turrets. Her hands would just get all ripped up and, like, she was a trooper. She would fall in the shooting. Like, yeah, that, but no. Nice. And, and my daughter is now 32. And uh, so she bought the, bought the sporty. And, of course, he's doing it up for her. And uh, I'm like, all right, you know what? She went out. She got herself a helmet stuff, which is which is great. Um, I'm like, all right, you got to get yourself a good pair of gloves. 
She's like, I'm not wearing gloves. Okay. Okay. Have fun. <laughs> I mean, her hands are shit just from falling all the time, uh, racing. Yeah, why wouldn't you want to wear gloves? She yeah, she, she did she crazy. She never liked gloves. I always think it's weird She's when like, people ride motorcycles and they have gloves. I always feel weird when I'm riding. Yeah. If I don't have my gloves on, it feels weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. It's I can't ride without without gloves. But, yeah, for some reason, she just doesn't doesn't like gloves. Um, you know, even when I was riding with my oldest, my oldest son, always wearing gloves, you know, sometimes, you know, I really, I never rode with a helmet, um, until Damn. he started riding, um, and now I wear a helmet all the time. Yeah. I don't, I don't even you wear know, gloves because they protect me. I just think they look cool. I I want that OJ Steve's, yeah. you know what I mean? Yes. And get that weird little tail yes. line where you got, like, you take your gloves off and you're, you've been riding all day and you have like. It's not even. It's not a farmer's tan. Let's have a name for it though. And you're like, bone OJ white tan. hands. The white oak tick tan. Yeah. <laughs> I like the guys who wear the cut off finger gloves. Oh, those are yeah, super cool. Summer. <laughs> have like the white here. Yeah. Oh, the white finger the little tips. dots. They have the like the little cutouts on there. <laughs> yeah. Love those. It's fucking badass, right? There. <laughs> I my sister. She got this Forster, and she's already like. So when when are you gonna hardtail it for him? Like you don't even know how to ride at first. We gotta get over that. that whole first. Oh yeah, no shit. Yeah. So she's got to go for that whole uh, MSF course and all that. Yeah. Stuff. So, but she's got that all. You know, we've been bringing her into uh, a huge parking lot around the corner from our house, and she, you know, she gets it. But stalling out, stalling out, still getting that fr whole friction zone thing yeah. down. Um, but. I told her, I said, you know what, we're, we're not the best teachers, so you know what, go to this, go take the course, they'll teach you, they'll put up with everybody, yeah. um, you know. Now, do you guys have to do a course in New Hampshire? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I didn't take one. I got my motorcycle license in Rhode Island, and it was a course, oh, but wow. it carries over to whatever state. That's right. Yeah. I remember you had used you said that yeah. on yeah. one of the podcasts. Yeah, you yeah. do a motorcycle course, yeah. but it's not like anything crazy. Like you don't have to go to Harley or like any of that. You just go to the DMV, and like the right. Nick, you do like figure eights and like stop in a square and all kind of stupid shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went years back with a buddy of mine, and the guys were like, "You guys did great, but just slow down a little bit." Okay. Yeah. No, you can't go to third gear. You can only go to second. Come yeah, on. they did the same thing with that. They're like, do not get out of second gear. Actually, the guy that was teaching the class was like, you need to take off in second gear because you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you can, you can take off in second, bud. You're going to need like third gear low. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, actually, I was, I was thinking today because you had mentioned like uh, your sister wanted to hardtail and you're like, are you going to learn how to ride first? And I was riding uh, on the soft tail today. And uh, I was like, dude, I'm going to fucking kill myself on this thing. When you have a chopper, you're kind of like a little bit more. A oh, hundred Like cautious. A hundred Like, dude, on the soft tail, dude, I don't give a fuck. I see it. They're like speed bump. No problem. Boom, 70 miles an hour on a back road, on a dirt road. Doesn't matter. I feel invincible on that thing, dude. I feel like I'm on a <laughs> yeah, sport so bike or some I have... shit. I'm like, I need my sketchy ass <laughs> shovel head again. So I'm afraid for my life. Yeah. So last year, I had I traded in my I had a 2012 Street Glide, and uh, towards the end of the summer, I was like beating on it real hard because I I wanted to get a I wanted to get a newer bike. So in February of last year, I started it and it just made horrendous noises. So I'm like, oh, I guess I got to trade it in now. And I picked up a 23 Road Glide. In that thing, oh, damn. That's like I need to get a reality check when I ride it because I I, I don't care on that bike. I, just, I beat the hell yeah. out of it, and I'm like, ah. and of course he's done all sorts of shit to it. So it's yeah, it's it's just nuts. But yeah, I know what you mean. The soft tail. It's man, I get on my bike and it's just some days I'll be taken off and and my wife's like, you look like a punk. I said, you know what? Yeah. I feel like a punk. Well, dude, it's so comfortable, like <laughs> suspension and like big cushy things and apes and stuff. 
Dude, it feels like I'm oh, riding yeah. on a cloud with angels cupping my balls. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to use that. Yeah, it's a sweet ride. But uh, yeah, it's it just like, it looks like garbage. It has like a hypercharger on it. So that does bring me back down to earth. Oh, that's the wet porch. Yeah, it has Kiriok and everything. Hell yeah, brother. Like, whoever had this before that's me. Bro- hell yeah, brother. I'd yeah. like to break his fucking collarbone. He has like six hundred dollars of aftermarket shit on it that looks like god awful. It's like you know they sell pretty cool looking stuff for this for these things too. <laughs> yeah. Forget to live to ride by the lit yeah. eagles. You know. Hell oh, yeah. yeah, brother. The hell yeah brothers are strong up here. <laughs> oh yeah, that was like uh picked up my daughter's forester. Uh New Hampshire. I forgot what town it was in. Lower, lower New Hampshire, but yeah, it was a, a lot of, a lot of eagle shit on yeah. there and a lot of, she loves it though. Churiaki. Like, how did they get big? Garbage. Like, who looks at that stuff and they're like, dude, uh, like a, uh, a mirror that looks like a skull hand? Like, what kind of person likes that shit? Yeah. Uh, you need a, like a, yeah. Oh, Fliction, yeah, the affliction, you know? bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that get big. I don't understand. Big I don't understand this guys. shit. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, there, there's... Um, we have... We have... We have that... Some of that culture around here uh, where we'll go to some... Uh, some bike events and it's like, okay, yeah. here yeah. they come. And then the <laughs> them have like... They're a hog member, and it's just like, oh, oh yeah. boy. Real dude, buttons. the affliction pants. If I see a dude in affliction pants, I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, yeah. it's good that they do that, yeah. though, because it has, like, it, it. they're all bejazzled and shit, so you can see them coming. You're like, oh, yeah, don't talk to that guy. Okay. Drinking a Mick Ultra. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's. Yeah. So are you guys all set? You guys all set to ride no. for season? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm I'm almost I'm almost there. No. I I just uh I got to repaint the shovel head and I'm actually working on a new seat. I just uh built a new seat pan and uh yeah, I just oh, have sweet. to it's all ready to go. It's all foamed. I just have to sew up a a co- uh, a cover. I'm doing like a a fur seat this time. Yeah, so that's nice. probably gonna be a pain in the ass to sew because it's like shag carpeting. But uh, uh yeah, you have a leather yeah, sewing yeah. machine, or yep. Oh, so sweet. my my wife's gonna help me out uh, yep. to try to figure out how the fuck you sew uh, fake hair from China. I bought a I bought a weave yep. off Amazon. I'm making it into a seat. <laughs> that's... So I, I was looking for a, a seat because, you know, the Heritage got that two-piece, you know, the little freaking pad for the passenger. So, you know, my wife was like, yeah, I, I mean, it's mm-hmm. fucking super thin. So, and she still likes to ride, but, you know, it's like, oh, God, this hurts. My back hurts. It's like, you know, so I couldn't find a seat. So I actually went, I went on Goodwill.com, found a touring seat. They said, oh, it'll fit your bike. I got it home. They actually shipped it to me, and it doesn't fit. It must smell the crack. So I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'll just cut it apart. So I actually cut it apart, made the own, my own oh, pad yeah. for the back seat. I just kind of, uh, you know, cut the leather and tucked it under. I just took that fucking stapler, oh, yeah. and it's nice and tight. Yeah. It's fine for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping the... Uh, I. I... My idea was like if I get a fur seat, then it'll be more forgiving, like the lines and shit, and I can just kind of do it shittily. <clears throat> um, but I'm I'm doing a king queen seat that actually has springs, so I, uh, yeah, I just uh, oh, rolled sweet. it on some bungs, so it looks like a a king queen. I mean, it's a king queen seat with a stash spot in it, but it actually has springs, and I got like these two inch springs, so they're kind of hidden. Um, and then uh. There's like the space underneath the seat is just perfect size for my tool roll. So I'm hoping like the the hair just kind of. I hope I don't ever get caught in the rain with that thing because that's gonna be fucking nasty as fuck, dude. 
<laughs> Wet oh, yes. hair. So the it looked like that print, uh, that truck in Dominic oh, yeah. for the dog truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think this through. I have to put a oh. wrap it in a garbage bag. <laughs> have you guys ever used? You know, some people say like those. Uh, I think Shade Tree Surgeon at one time it said like those. Uh, it was like almost like a sheepskin like padding. Yeah, the, they say them oh, things. A lot of people look, use those. I know they a look lot horrendous. Of that use those. They look horrendous, but they say they're super, super like comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people used it. It's just straight sheep hide. I think right. It's oh, not. Yeah. A, I don't know. Yeah. It's not even like a cushion. Yeah, I, see a I lot have of people use it for like cross country shit. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to keep you, it's supposed to be, like, breathable, so you don't, like, you know, you have your ass on a fucking leather seat. Like, that gets uncomfortable after a while, but I guess it and breathes better. Get swamp ass after about four or five hours. Oh, yeah. Dude, I leave the house with swamp ass in the summertime. I wake up in the morning, I got swamp ass, roll out of bed, and I just <laughs> hop on the bike. As he's drying off from the shower, he gets swamp ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. Per permanent swamp ass. <laughs> That's probably yeah. the name of the episode right there. Burning swamp. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, I got to try. I, I, I got like a. Oh, I had a the world's worst chopper seat that I got. Uh, oh. I made it and I got it upholstered like my first one for my sporty, and uh, it was thin, 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 thin. And I'm a big guy, so I sit down on that. And I just immediately bottom out. And after about uh -huh. 20, out, 20 minutes on the bike, like, it's not so much that my ass is uncomfortable, but my dick falls asleep. It, like, pinches a nerve or something. There's, like, a dick nerve in your ass or something. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? And I don't like that feeling. I don't mind, like, having a little pain in my ass, you know what I mean? A jockey shifter goes up there or whatever, you know? Yeah, you know, say la vie. But uh, once you can't feel your own dick, you're like, dude, I feel like I'm a quadriplegic. Yeah, I need yeah. to do something about this. <laughs> And I got one of those lambskin like pads to put on it. And then uh I was just like, dude, this looks so gay. With like my little fucking hemorrhoid donut on the fucking chopper. I was like, <laughs> I'm not doing this. I don't care. I'm getting a new seat. And then I got a new seat for yes. that. But so the the first bike I built, it was a 01 Kawasaki Vulcan. And uh I had no idea what the fuck I was doing at the time. So I I uh I mean made a seat out of I think it was like 16 gauge steel and I went to uh, I don't know where I went I got like thinnest foam I could get because I wanted it to look cool and uh my dad he put leather over it and my mom she had an old beach cruiser bicycle so I took the seat springs off of that and used that Hell for yeah. the seat springs and the I made it into a rigid the sketchiest way possible I, I'm glad I never registered it. It's I don't even know how I did. I like welded two bars to the frame and then back down to the swing arm. What the with fuck? no gussets, no gussets at all. Jesus. The most uncomfortable, fucked up bike to ride. No I took it around the block and I'm like, fuck this. And then you sold it to someone. Are they still alive? Oh, no, 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 no. I'll I'll never sell that. It's just sitting in the shit. But my plan is, I want to get a frame jig one day and rebuild that frame. Actually make it so it won't kill somebody. No shit. And so the, the Suzuki my brother was building, he actually gave me it. So I it never ran, so I tore the motor out. And I have the chassis in my shed, so I want to... Make that in like an old school like seventies chopper and get a seventies on a Suzuki motor and put it so I have a kickstart that I want to okay. like show my brother like hey finally finished no shit that would be that's down the line I want yeah you gotta I mean you have to make those mistakes that are like uh, life threatening oh, yeah. especially when you start fucking with like structural stuff dude. And yeah. there was so many gaps. I just like fell down, just like just tacked it all up. And I was like, Rrr. I'm like, now that I think, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad to sell that to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my first bike, 
<clears throat> was a bobber. You know, it was a CB750. I bobbed the back and I needed fender struts. And I didn't know fucking anything, dude. And I just got like, it might have been like quarter inch flat stock aluminum for, for the fender struts. So Jesus. as soon as that fucking, as soon as the first little fucking speed bump, dude, that fender just like dug in. Those things bowed Boom. out. I'm like, well, that looks weird. Yeah. And uh, I did end up selling, uh, I ended up trading that bike to someone. And I was just like, it's your problem. That's it. Yeah. I had, oh, yeah, the other thing like... was too, like, I remember actually going back to like, I was in this, this riding school in Rhode Island and, uh, I put, I had that bike and I was, I was actually riding around like that a little bit, but, um, I put it up for sale cause I wanted to get an XS or something. I actually wanted to get a hardtail. And, uh, one of the kids that was in my riding class came, dude, I was asking 1250 for the CB 750, right? Or 1500. And this dude offered me twelve fifty for it, and I said no. I was like, "Yeah, I had no idea Stupid. what this. <laughs> no shit, dude. <laughs> now, me now, I would have been like, I would have been like, is this guy fucking retarded? Of course, twelve fifty. <laughs> I wouldn't even put it for fifteen hundred. I thought this thing was the bee's knees, though, and <laughs> uh, it was an absolute death trap piece of shit. Um, it was the ugliest fucking bike, dude. It was first of all, I had a sprung seat on it with shocks." With aluminum fender struts. Dude, this thing was fucking horrendous. I think I had the stock tank on it too, by the way. 1500 bucks, and I was haggling with this guy. Unbelievable. Yeah, oh like, uh, I want to build F's and Sports, or I would either want to get a Shovelhead or a Evo, a Big Twin Evo. Yeah. That's, I really want to do either one of those. Yeah, dude. Shovelhead prices are fucking insane right yeah. now. That's the only thing. Insane. But big twin that's why I went with a I was gonna I was I was on the lookout, dude. I've been on the hunt for a Jetty shovel mm -hmm. for a long time, but I'm like I'm feeling myself. I'm like, I'm not made of money, dude. So I ended yeah. up getting the yeah. big twin Evo and they're actually pretty reasonably priced right now. All the prices are starting to go down quite a bit. Yeah, I've noticed that. Then there's still some people would be like, Yeah, I want this much. It's not gold, dude. No. Nah. Dude, what Loctite sent me a fucking post. What how much was that guy asking for two shovel heads? Three grand. Dude, three grand for two shovel heads. Wow. Damn. I've never I've never opened up the Facebook Marketplace app so fucking fast in my life, dude. Right? And it was already gone. I was yeah. like Damn. I was like, bro, I'll come tonight and I'll give you a reach around for three yeah. grand for two shovels. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was like my fucking golf cart. So I, uh, a couple couple months ago, I bought a golf cart because uh, we have a seasonal uh, campground, and I just got to sit there too. And uh, golf cart prices were like were expensive, so I just stopped looking. And I popped over the marketplace one day. I'm like, no shit, thirteen hundred bucks. I messaged the lady. I'm like, I'll buy it. I don't I don't care. I'll buy it. Bought it that day. Runs perfect. Got it home. Started doing donuts in my backyard, dude. That's pretty steep, though. Thirteen hundred bucks for a golf cart. So it's a it's a gas one. It's a Yamaha oh, gas. Fuck yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No shit. And normally they're like above two grand. Uh, no shit. And this one's in pretty nice condition. Dude, golf carts are so much fun. Yeah. Oh my god. Mm. Yeah. We're. Like you said, we're we're seasonal at a campground, which isn't too far from home, but out in the middle of the woods, and it's great because you know get there, I bought the beer. The first thing I put on all our golf cart was a freaking cup, couple cup holders. He was on there, got a cooler in the back. Oh, like okay. all right, yeah. I remember uh, when I was I was living down in Florida, and uh, I was like dirt poor, like. I, I used to work at a Mexican restaurant as a bus boy and I would just like, I would go in the, the walk-in freezer and just like eat chicken that, <laughs> that was like prepared, like for like, like cold, just so I wouldn't starve to death. But, uh, there was a golf course near us and, uh, dude, it was like 20 bucks and it was 18 holes and the cart was included. So we we're just like, 
carts included, dude. Let's pool our money together. We got some golf clubs at like fucking the secondhand store or whatever, or the dumpster or some <laughs> shit. And I remember uh, we we went there. There's probably like ten of us, and uh, it was BYOB. So we just racks and racks and racks in the golf cart. We're fucking out in the hot Florida sun all day, getting shit faced. And uh, by like the last hole, we're just racing around in golf cart shit faced. And uh, <laughs> this chick that was riding next to me, I hit this fucking puddle, this mud puddle, and dude, it sprayed her perfectly, like in the face, like this perfect stream. And she just cut hard right, dude, right into the fucking swamp. In Florida, it's fucking alligators and shit. And we were like, oh, fuck, dude. We went in there and we're trying to, like, get, dude, the gators are, like, coming in. We're trying to get this golf cart, dude. That th we had to leave it. We couldn't get it out. And uh, we wa we're, wa we're walking back to the car, like, mud up to here. You know what I mean? We're in a Florida swamp. And uh, they're like, where's the golf cart? And we're like, what are you talking about? Oh, they're like, yeah. we know what you did. And we're like, dude, mud, like, six drunk guys mud up to here. We're just like. They're like <laughs> lifetime ban, never come back. Oh, like, yeah. taking pictures of us yeah. and shit. Damn. But yeah, Florida's fun and golf carts are wicked fucking fun. I didn't know they were that, that expensive. Oh, if I find one, oh, yeah. I, I could definitely whip a golf cart. Oh, on your road, dude, that'd so, be sick. Oh, oh, oh yeah. was, uh, there's a there's a dude at our campground that has uh, he's got a, one of those old three wheeled Harley oh. Davidson golf carts. I really wanted one. I really wanted one of those. Three wheeler. So, that fuck. seems dangerous as fuck. Oh yeah. Can you imagine that it happened oh, yeah. on a Friday night? That must campground. flip e dude, golf carts flip pretty easy. Oh in with oh, three yeah. wheels? Yeah. Forget so, about it. Before I even got my before I even bought it, I was looking up lift kits for it because I'm like, I want to lift this thing. Sell this golf cart sick. lift kits. And I found Oh, yeah, man, that's fucking awesome, yeah. dude. And so a guy at our campground, he put a Predator 420 in his. So I, I found the kit and I'm like, oh, this thing is sick. And then I looked more. They have a Predator 670 Holy kit that comes with God. a whole new swing arm and everything. I'm like, dude, dude that's, that's nuts. Dude, that's fucking okay. wild. A, be a new yeah. hobby unlocked. I didn't no, know. Seriously. <laughs> Black coffee for the win. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to stop at the package store on the way home from work today. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, Connecticut. You got to gotta go to the packy. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You guys uh, up there, like Cumberland Farms, all that shit sells beer, right? Everywhere yeah, sells beer. Yeah, we get beer. But you have to get alcohol, like hard shit, at a liquor store. Uh, yes. That's that's in right. Maine, you can just buy whatever you want at the gas station. You can buy yeah, a fucking nice. fifth Patron if you want. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Dude, when I was in Arizona, they used to have drive through liquor stores, like convenience stores, but oh, you could get like fucking ho ho's and fucking bag of chips, pack of cigarettes, Dude, bottle of vodka, fucking some beer. It was fucking yes, nice. Yeah. Fucking you didn't have to get out of your car. Yeah. Oh, kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have one. Uh, we have one drive through gas station the next town up. And it was crazy because when I, I used to smoke cigarettes and you pull right up to the drive through and be like, yeah, give me a bag of my lights. Okay, anything else? Yeah, that's nice. Man, I miss smoking cigarettes. I wish they weren't so bad for you. I know, me too. Because I fucking love smoking. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm on uh, the... Uh... <laughs> what is the on? What's that? It, it's What's like uh, Zen. Like I'm zipping on the Zin. This is my first my first container. This uh, I just picked it up this afternoon. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I like the Zin. Yeah, I'll go back and forth on or Zin. They're both about the same. So yeah. Well, it's but, kind of like a Nicorette. Like you just like with the Nicorette, you just pack a lip. It's gum, you know. But you're still packing a lip, and this is this is kind of the same thing. Only it's a little bit more mild than like the gum. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. But yeah, I couldn't, you know, I tried the whole chewing tobacco thing. I couldn't do that. Oh, I love it. That's my weakness. Oh, oh. that's my weakness. My father was, my father was oh, 83 years old. And legend. He's just like, he's a legend because he's been like dipping for 
ever. And he like, don't spit, don't take it out when he's eating. You know? I'm, I'm like, go, damn, dude, you're got to be like, yeah. I was crazy. the same way. I used to pack a lip before I went to bed. Oh, and I just go to sleep. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I chew, lip one, I chew uh, one fucking time. Copenhagen straight. I fucking, oh, oh my God, I love it. Like, even just right now talking about dude. it, like, my mouth is watering. <laughs> dude, I remember, I remember doing it the first time I did it. I was like, you know, I was, I, I've always been a heavy smoker. Uh, like, always pack a day. Like, when I started smoking, like, young, it was like I started pack a day and it was pack right. two packs. And then, uh, I had to fly somewhere and they got rid of all the fucking, smoking lounges in the airport and i was like dude i know what no happened way. to smokers rights yeah dude dude i was so bummed i i i lived through that period where it was like can't smoke in bars can't smoke in restaurants they took them all out oh, of yeah. the airport and shit and it fucking sucks so i was like dude how am i gonna go on this like six hour flight without a cigarette i'm gonna murder someone i'm gonna yeah. fucking kick down the cockpit door you know yeah. uh so i was like oh i'll just get some fucking dip and dude, I packed a lip and I remember like sitting there and I was just, dude, I was, I got like so sick, I, but I don't think I was spitting. I think I was just, I packed a huge <laughs> lip and I was just like, look, look. It's like, I'm glad I never smoked cigarettes. Oh yeah. I just, I just drank with my buddies. Yeah. Up to like a couple months ago, I would just drink Bud Heavy and Fireball. It was the best, best combo. Now I just either do a, Miller Lights or uh, the fancy seltzers. Yeah. I I like the, uh, like, it depends on what I'm doing. I, I typically drink uh, tequila now, like if I'm drinking, you know, uh, just straight up. But if I have to do stuff like drive and shit, I'll do light beers. If I got to yeah. drive, I'll just drink beers. <laughs> Yeah, because if I if I if I'm drinking tequila in IPAs and shit, I'm I can't be driving, you know. But like, you can you can have a couple of Coronas, a couple of Modelos, you're good to go. It's probably yeah, even just some before people. you drive. Yeah, this just when when I listen, this isn't any little. advice that we're giving anybody. Okay, drink and drive is your own goddamn risk. Hey, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you should. You definitely don't be drunk and drive. Definitely don't be <laughs> drunk and drive. That's terrible. But. I am, dude, I'm a big guy. I can drink a couple beers and drive. I'm totally fine. And in fact, it's the best time you'll have. It'll just a little yeah. bit of buzz. Especially if you're driving like a bar. You just got to focus. Oh, dude, riding your bike and drinking is the best. Oh, I don't not like that. Yeah, like one eye open. Yeah. Just fucking send it, dude. Just pack a lip, a full as in, two pouches. <laughs> drink a Sixer or a Modella. The sponsor of this show, hop on your bike, swing that leg over, and just speed around with one break. And then smoke a cigar and inhale. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. I remember smoking a cigar one time, and, you know, I didn't know how to do it, you know, because I was a cigarette smoker. So I smoked like a cigar, like a big cigar, just inhaling the whole fucking thing. Dude, I woke up at like oh, three yeah. in the morning. I thought I was gonna die. I had never had such a bad headache. <laughs> I was like, dude, is my brain leaking out of my fucking ears, dude? Oh like, yeah, copping up a lot. Yeah, dude, what an idiot, dude. That was so bad. But live and learn. You know, you gotta make those mistakes. Yeah, one of one of the times I I quit tried quit smoking cigarettes. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll just start smoking cigars. Just so smoke got black and mild. Black and mild. I was going through like. Three packs a day. Oh, fuck. Dude, and I was like, it's like, smoking. Shit. I'm like, cigarette. My wife's like, are you inhaling those? I'm like, yeah. She's like, Holy shit. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I got to stop. I like that. those, uh, I like the jar on blacks. And I think they're technically a cigar. They're like a cigarello mm -hmm. or some shit. I inhale those. Yeah. Probably not good for you. Yeah, it's definitely not. Yeah, once in a while, we'll, we'll be at our camp. We'll get a couple. We'll buy a couple good cigars. Oh, yeah. I'll buy a couple of uh, but guinea sips. But, you know, it's, I don't know. I'm afraid to have a cigar now, even though I'd love to have one. It's just, I think it's going to bring me right back to smoking cigarettes. But, oh, I can, know. right now, I haven't smoked cigarettes in like a good amount of fucking time now. I could, if we went out drinking tonight, I could smoke two packs of cigarettes tonight and then wake up tomorrow and not smoke any butts. Wow. Yeah, I wish I, I do it all the that. time. My oldest <laughs> son is like, 
And my oldest son is like, yeah, he'll he'll go out with his buddies or something for a weekend. And he'll like smoke two packs, three packs of cigarettes, come home. It's like, okay, he's good for yeah. like a year. I'm like, damn, dude, I wish yeah. I could do that. I wish I could just have like one cigarette. Like, I envy these they, people. I have like work all day, come home, have a beer or a coffee, have a cigarette. Yeah. And that's we it. have a buddy that smokes rollies, like rolled up tobacco. Oh, once wow. a year. We go, we go on this mm. camping trip and he'll smoke a whole pouch of rolled cigarettes and just not smoke another cigarette, not have any kind of nicotine until the next year. It's fucking wow. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I wish I could do that. Yeah. I find it easier the older I get, the worse the hangovers are. So, like, now when I go out, and I drank or something, like, I'm like, I can't smoke two packs of cigarettes. I can't smoke, like, a bunch of fucking, you know, blacks or whatever. You have to, like, because it's not worth it in the morning. Because I got, again, when you when you have young kids, they don't give a fuck if you're hungover. Mm-hmm. No, they don't give a shit. Oh, oh hell no. no. And they are loud. <laughs> kids are fucking loud. Oh, yeah. Luckily for me, like, I, I've said it on here a couple of times, I do not get hungover. Um, but I also just, like, won't even drink if I got to deal with my family the next day, because it's like, just in case I get a hangover, <laughs> I'm not trying to deal with that. Yeah, what was it? See, it depends what depends what part of the family yeah. I have to deal with. Yeah. I've had one hangover Maybe my entire life. I think I just, like, can't get them somehow. Jeez. Yeah, I'm hungover, like, every day. You know, I always the only time I got a hangover was when I drank I a whole bottle of Patron. That's why I don't fucking drink tequila anymore. Yeah, I That's can't a, do that. I was hungover stuff, for two dude. days, dude. Oh, actually, a lot. I've had two hangovers: one from drinking a bottle of Patron, and then one from drinking two bottles of Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. Mm-hmm. Rotten, is it? Yeah. What? Well, oh. Here's the thing: is I drank the first one, and for anybody that's a long time listening, for the story, but I drank the first one, and I was like, "Damn, I feel like when I was younger, these things used to get you fucked up." Feeling fine, <laughs> dude. I'm sitting at a fire with my yeah. ex-wife and her whole family, and so I drink that first one. <laughs> And nothing. 20 minutes go by. I'm like, fuck it. I'm cracking into the other one. So I crack in the other one. I start getting a buzz on. End up finishing that whole fucking bottle. So that's been like an oh, hour. Jesus. I finished two fucking bottles of Mad Dog. Blacked out. <laughs> Don't remember anything. And apparently, we're all sitting around the fire ring at the campground. And I stood up and whipped my dick out and pissed on the fire in front of everybody. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, though, I was hurt the next day, dude. I, this is what I used to ride a Jap bike still. I had a GSXR 1000. And I had to go work in a fucking, I was a mechanic at the time. I had to go work as a mechanic at 6 a.m. And I had a two hour ride. So I had to get up at oh fucking 4 a.m., listen to a fucking rice burner going down the highway for two hours, and then use fucking impact guns, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's making oh, me yeah. sick, dude. I Here's feel the funny thing too. Listening to that. Here's the funny thing too, dude. Is God, <laughs> I was so hungover and I was pissed off at work that in my mind I was pissed at my boss. So I treated him like a piece <laughs> of shit all day. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Yeah, so when I drink, I have a, I have a cyst. It, it makes me feel better. I don't know if it works or not, but I, I drink a beer and then. Pound of water. I know a lot of guys yeah, that do that. As I can. That definitely helps. I don't know. I've never had a, never uh, have had a. I've hangover. never done the water thing, and I've never done the Pedialyte thing. I just figure if I'm drinking PBR, I'm yeah. fine. I'm getting enough water at the same time. Yeah, it's pretty watery. Pedialyte, yeah. Pedialyte d- definitely does help. I hate the taste of Pedialyte though. It tastes like vomit. I'd rather just puke in my mouth. Yeah. It t- it's no, no, dude. They have the adult one, so they have the Pedialyte like in the bottle for babies and shit. But then they just have pouches for adults. Yeah, I don't know. I've tried all that shit, like liquid IV and all that shit. and I think it all tastes like vomit. Yeah, yeah, it tastes pretty nasty. I tell you what, liquid IV though is no joke. That shit makes yeah. me feel like a million bucks. Everybody should be mandatory to drink that once a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the electrolytes. And dude, shit. it's yeah. it's insane how yeah. good you feel after drinking that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I do find I could drink more since I quit smoking oh, cigarettes, oh, yeah. though. I found that I smoke more yeah. cigarettes when I drink. <laughs> True. 
<laughs> no, but the ha the hangovers I are like the the hangovers are from the cigarettes, you know, mostly. Nah, like if you smoke, oh, yeah. if you go ham on some packs of cigarettes, dude, you fucking you have a headache in the morning. Yeah, you have a headache, but I th I feel like it has a lot to do with that you drank a whole bottle of whiskey. Yeah, no, but if <laughs> if you're drinking Pedialyte, you're taking like I don't know. I just I I just I'll wake say up, this though some Pedialyte for, and for a guy you chomp a Valium for a guy like you. You get pretty rowdy when we get out and we're drinking. You fucking put them down, Bob. <laughs> This motherfucker will crush a six pack of fucking IPAs that cost thirty five dollars in fucking an hour. <laughs> it's wild, Jesus. and he'd just be yes. completely fine. It's like a fucking seven point five beer, and he's like, "So what else?" <laughs> it's just great. Right. I, I grew up. I mean, we were a rowdy bunch, but what the guys that I grew up around, you could not fuck around. You know, like if you got drunk and you were acting like an idiot. They beat the shit out of you. Yeah. They tool on you so bad that you would never come back, you know? So, like, when I was growing up drinking, and I started, like, in my early teens, you know, like, 12, 13, uh, you know, you'd drink, like, you would drink a handle of vodka, and you'd have to compose yourself, or you'd get the shit beaten out of you, you know what I mean? So, it was, like, there was lightweights, and then there was heavyweights, and, like, me and my crew were the heavyweights, so it was, like, even if I am really drunk, like, dude... I'm just, I'm lucky, too, that uh, some people get drunk and they fucking black out and they act like assholes and shit. I don't really have that. You know what I mean? No. So here's what I can tell. Every time you, but like every chill. time, every time you start, like, getting, oh, yeah. I can tell, like, your level of drunk. Mm -hmm. And, like, when you start getting, like, drunk drunk, I can tell because you start giggling a bunch. And then you'll happy. start, and then, you, dude, you're so happy. <laughs> And then you start like stumbling a little bit, but as soon as I see your first stumble, you just automatically you're like, "All right, I'm done. I wrap it up," and you go to bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know, as soon as you stumble, you're like, "All right, I'm done." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know when to go to bed because, like, my older brother, he's an alcoholic like me, but he blacks out and he'll be up for hours, dude. He'll be drive, dude. There was nights when we woke up in the morning and we look out at his car and there's like a bunch of fucking. Like his bumper's gone, and there's like a bunch of like grass stuck in the grill, and we're like, "What the fuck, dude? Like, what happened to your car? You know, like he'll black out, but then do a bunch of shit." And like, he's the type of guy too that like, at like my cousin's wedding, like the bride's like slapping him in the face for some dumb shit he said, you know. So me, I'm just like, all right, I'm so drunk, I just need to go to bed. And then I, just, yeah, can I just go? I just go tuck myself yeah, in. I'll you're do real the good Irish at shutting goodbye. it off. <laughs> yeah. You just need to know your limits. You guys realize they make a non-alcoholic tequila? Never heard of that. Yeah. So yeah, water. she was, she was over the other night for dinner, and she said, eat that. They make a, she goes, it and she loves tequila. It's all she drinks. And I guess her, her boyfriend got her a bottle of this stuff, and uh, she's like, it tastes just like tequila. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. I, I love tequila. I, I used to be a bourbon whiskey guy, and then I graduated to tequila. You can, yeah, you gotta, you, quite a bit. You have to, it has to be a certain level. You know what I mean? Like, you cannot yeah. do... If, you, if you're if you like, oh, I don't drink tequila, and all you, all you ever had was, like, Jose Cuervo, you haven't had, like, good tequila. No. You need some no. good shit. My wife, my wife will drink tequila, and she only likes the good yeah. stuff. Like the Patron Gold, which is like, God knows what, a shot and when you oh, go yeah, out. Dude. Fucking crazy. But. Tequila gets real expensive real quick. I mean, there's there's shots oh, yeah. that cost hundreds of dollars, you know? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's like Johnny Walker Blue. That shit is oh, freaking so crazy good, expensive, though. but tastes like it. I love it. All the Johnny Walkers, the red, the blue, the black is so fucking. Yeah. Yeah, the real expensive one is yeah. the blue, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've had that, I think, once. But the, I, was, I settled for the red and black. Like, that shit's fucking good. I think my favorite right now is Woodford, though. Woodford Reserve is so oh, yeah. fucking good. That is like, that's yeah. just, that's pretty much as classy as I get. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty high up there. And what I like about Woodford, too, uh, <clears throat> they have the uh, 100 proof. Mm-hmm. And that's nice and smooth, you know? Yep. 
Oh, yeah. That's yeah, some good stuff. I know usually a couple times a week, me and my boys will get a couple good cigars. My oldest will usually break out like the, the basil Oh, I bourbon. love basil Hayden. Oh, that with a nice, you know, a good cigar. Pretty yep. good. Yeah, as far as bourbon goes, like, the best, like, I'm kind of cheap, you know, but I have to, I, I have rules about how low I'll go, you know, like bottom shelf stuff is out. Mm -hmm. Anything in plastic is out. Oh, for um, sure. Anything in plastic like, is out. Oh, yeah. Anything in plastic. If you're drinking out if of If I catch you drinking bottle, Codwells, I'm fucking you up. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't be doing so. that. In fact, when when I was younger, uh, I remember I used to get the plastic bottle, you know, of fucking <laughs> vodka or whatever. And then I, I would take oh, yeah. like a gray goose bottle that was like empty from someone else's party and I'd <laughs> fill it up. And then we'd like go out with like this gray goose bottle, but it was actually just like pop off. And so when I, uh, my first, oh, yeah. <laughs> when I first turned 21, it was during COVID. It was during COVID. And uh, we were at our old campground and I bought a bottle of, what was it, LaRue? I bought a bottle of LaRue and I put, no. Uh, gummy worm in it. Oh, and yeah. it's like, no, fuck it. I ate like four of them and I'm like, whoa, shit, I'm seeing, seeing stars. Yeah. yeah, that's that's when he did the, uh, that was the, that's when he did the Irish. Uh, he just yeah. walked back to his camp. I'm like, see, yeah. <laughs> it was fucking midday. I'm like, okay, I got it. I got to go. Yeah, next time you're up in New Hampshire, stop by the liquor store. They do, uh, there's a vodka called Granite State Vodka and you can get a handle. Oh, wow. For six bucks. Wow. Dude, oh, my, shit. Uh, my in laws oh. buy it by the case. Six wow. bucks, dude, for a handle of Granite State. Unbelievable. Wow. No sales tax, bro. Wow. That's a lot of hooch. Wow. Yeah. So if you've got a problem, make the trek up to New Hampshire. Granite State Vodka, unofficial <laughs> oh, yeah. sponsor of this episode. And by the way, we're almost yes. two hours in here. We got to thank oh, some of those motherfuckers Man. that make this show possible. Up first, we have Lowbrow Customs. Everything we need for the road ahead. One of the only websites where you can build an entire fucking chopper at one place. Tyler and his team support every fucking chopper show across the country, so return the favor by shopping at lowbrowcustoms.com. Next, we got No Luck Paintworks who has a brand new logo that's looking fresh as fuck. Um, compliments to Professor Falcon. Um, hit up Dan if you want to bring your bike to the next fucking level with the dopest paint job. Uh, hit up No Luck Paintworks on Instagram. Next, we got Deadbeat Customs. Steve has been supporting us since the very motherfucking beginning. Through us getting canceled, through switching fucking hosts, um, to Deadbeat almost being canceled. Uh, Steve has dealt with the bullshit. He's been on the train for a long fucking time. Um, so you can help us return that favor by shopping at deadbeatcustoms.com. Use code LOWLIFE at checkout. Uh, he has a little bit of everything for everyone. Uh, from Chopper Dudes, Dinah Guys, performance baggers, luggage shit, helmets, vest, sunglasses. He's actually doing a giveaway right now, so go check that out. Um, but go check out and shop at DebbieCustoms.com. Next, we got Steel City Blacksmithing. The homie Josh out in PA, twisting all things metal, fucking running shit through his CNC lathe, doing the, whatever else he does. That fucking kid does everything. Uh, if you want to put a nice little touch on your bike to send it over the fucking edge. A twisted fucking brake stay, maybe. Um, hit up Steel City Blacksmithing on Instagram. Tell the boys from the Low Life Chopper podcast sent you. Next, we got Stay Strong Co., the creator of the best motherfucking hot sauce in the goddamn world. Listen, I use this thing for everything, for glaze. I use it for glazing shit on the fucking barbecue, bro. I put it on my fucking eggs. My omelets, my steaks, my fucking chicken. It goes on everything. Uh, so go get yourself some The Shit Hot Sauce at staystrongco.com. Stay on org. Instagram. Oh, staystrongco.org. Um, and make sure you watch out for that collab 
for that low life chopper hot sauce. We <laughs> Motor Co. That's H U I Motor Co. Gear price for riders so they can still afford to ride. I know you're a little bit salty. You missed out on the $100 off for the pre order on the vest, but you can still go and buy the vest and all sorts of other products. Just enter code low life at checkout. Get you some cash off. Ain't a hundred bucks. Sorry, bro. You missed out. You slept. Punk. Next up, we got Matt from Burnt Up Wood Burning. And I'm not even going to do the ad read. Let's get it right from the horse's mouth. Matt, tell us about Burnt up wood burning, uh, custom wood burning, any design you want. If I can do the stencil and I can get the design, I'll do it for you. We'll ship anywhere, basically. Um, if it's overseas, of course, shipping is going to be a little more. But anything custom, coat racks, uh, pictures of your dogs, um, cars, bikes, you know, anything. Yeah, the will you do that? Would you do that? Old ladies tit. I would do that if I got a good picture. Fuck, sure. I'm going to stop wood burning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do it at a discount. Uh, you can find my Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, Burnt Up Wood Burning. And I'm on YouTube, but I don't use that too much. So uh, basically, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and I've started doing Sick. workshops. So, oh, nice. I've been teaching people, which is kind of cool. Awesome. Do you do it? Do you do that right at your uh, at your place? Uh, actually, uh, my daughter-in-law has her own art studio uh, about 45 minutes from our house. So, uh, I'll do classes there and I've had other people I've traveled around Connecticut. Um, people have pet businesses. Like I just did one at a, a mm -hmm. dog grooming place, um, did all pet stuff. Um, had some people do, you know, pet, oh, pet yeah. designs and stuff. So nice. it's, it's pretty wild. It's, it's cool. It's, and it's kind of like that paint and pour thing, but people are digging it because they're like, oh, wow, we could use hot oh, things and drink. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people bring like bottles of wine and cheese and all that awesome. shit, beer. All right. No shit. Good. And you, and you said you're going to be, <laughs> so, yeah. you're going to be up uh Laconia 101 this year. You're going to, you're going to be stopping by the low life lowdown. Hell yeah. I want but, to. Yes. Yes. We're going up to Laconia on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday to Sunday, um, but we're, I, I think camp. Boston and I are <laughs> come up to the lowdown Fuck yeah. on Saturday. We're, right up, but we're probably going to ride up, probably find a place to stay over overnight at campground, and then ride back home, and then yeah. go back Sick. up Tuesday. So you get to meet Matt, you come to the Low Life Lowdown show and meet these boys in person. Yes. We will be at La Spada. Oh, we no shit, you're going to La Spada too. That's awesome. But we Oh, yes. Worcester Are you Bike setting up? We'll Are you setting up our show? We'll um, okay. I'm not sure yet. Um, I would like to. It depends how much how much inventory I have. Cool. If I have enough, well, I will. Um, but I know I'm thinking about contacting. Um, no luck, Paintworks. Um, to see <laughs> what prices are for vending, and I may. Cool. I may. Yeah, just let us know. We'll get you hooked up. Booth. No problem at all. Yeah, okay. he might bring the chopper up. So, dope. It's done by then. If it's done, hopefully, it, hopefully it should. It should. Now be you got a new date. Get it done by that show. <laughs> yes. All right. We got last, but not least, we got Loctite's motherfucking chop shop. Come get you located in Epping, New Hampshire, for all your pinstripe needs. Hit me up. Whether you want custom garage sign. Uh, you want me to pinstripe your bike? I will not do Christmas ornaments. Don't fucking ask me. I don't care what time of year it is. <laughs> uh, you want me to pinstripe your grill, your girl's titties, your baby, whatever you want. I'll fucking pinstripe it. I can put a name or paint on anything. Hit me up, Loctite's Chop Shop on Instagram or at our next sponsor, the Low Life Chopper Podcast. This show, <laughs> Low Life Chopper Podcast dot com. You can find us. All our shops and socials there. You can find us anywhere on the World Wide Web. Low Life Chopper Podcast, everything. At Low Life Chopper Podcast on Instagram. At Low Life Chopper Podcast on YouTube. But there's a one-stop shop. www.getyourpen. 
lowlifechopperpodcast.com. We got our archive episodes going up. We got our regular episodes going up. We got our low life lowdown page up. You can go check it out right now. We're going to be building that as we get sponsors and raffles and all sorts of other shit and maybe some uh, dunk tanks with uh, hot midgets. We're going to be updating you guys on the show as oh, it yeah. unfolds. So we'll put that that out there now. If anybody knows a hot midget that wants to wear a white t-shirt and a dunk tank, let us know. Not saying that's happening we'll pay, at the show, yeah. but it might. We'll pay airfare, and I'll put her up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On that note, me, me and Loctite, me and Loctite will put her up at a Motel Six, and we'll have to. We'll make I'll sure the that she's in the garage. <laughs> Just throw her up there. <laughs> I'll just lift the bike lift up, Meg. That's a loft. <laughs> Anyways, boys. Hey, listen. It was great having you guys on. I cannot wait to meet you in person at the Low Life Live. Actually, I guess at La Spada and then again at the Lowdown. Um, we'll see you yeah. guys out there. It was a pleasure yes, having you yes, on. Sir. And guys, if you want any custom wood burning done, you now you know where the fuck to go. You got a plug for custom wood burning. And until next week, bye, bitch.